What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the LS Swap series. If you're new here, there's like three or four or five videos ahead of this for the series. You definitely want to go and check those out. But today is gonna be a pretty important one because today we're powering everything up. And of course, by powering everything up, I mean that today we are installing our Holly Terminator X Max system. So if you don't know already, the Holly Terminator is designed to be a complete standalone ECU and power unit for the LS motor. Specifically, the kit that we have today is designed to power the LQ9 and 4L80E that are going in the Jeep. Well, that are already in the Jeep. And because this harness is designed specifically for that setup, the installation's really pretty straightforward. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and start plugging some stuff in. So just to kind of fill you guys in on the process, when you order your kit from Holly directly, there's a lot of questions that you're gonna have to answer. Like, what motor is it? What injectors do you have? What transmission are you gonna use? There's a lot, and the reason for that is because they're gonna design the kit specifically based around the parts that you already have. That's gonna save you a lot of money not having to go in and replace everything. So instead of this being a one-size-fits-all kit where it's really up to you to make sure that your injectors and sensors and the rest of your plugs work, Holly kind of takes the guesswork out of it. Now, I know most of you guys are probably just like me, and as soon as you see instructions, you toss them. In this case, however, you probably want to hang on to these just because they have a lot of really helpful tips, especially when you go to actually start this thing up. With that said, however, I'm going to go ahead and get to installing the harness itself because everything on that harness is labeled and it can really only plug into one spot. So as you guys can see, I went ahead and took a little extra time to tuck away some of these harnesses and make sure that they were all nice and organized. He threw in the injector harness and then connected that into the main harness. You won't be able to see it, but all of my sensors in the back of the engine are plugged in. And I went ahead and ran the main harness over to the passenger side. And the reason for that is because I'm actually going to house the Terminator system inside the cab just to keep it out of the elements. I'm sure that it is a waterproof unit, but at the end of the day, I would rather not take my chances. So we're gonna find a spot inside the cab to mount the Terminator as well as the three inch screen. Now, as I mentioned, this harness was pretty much plug and play as I expected it to be. I do still have the main power cable as well as the rest of the main harness that need to be plugged in. Before we do that, we need to find a place to mount this guy. Now, as far as mounting locations for the Terminator system itself, I don't really have a ton of options. Obviously, what was a four door is now a two door, and that really cuts down on a lot of my storage space. But I did have one idea and I think it's gonna work really well. So my initial thought was that I was gonna store it in the glove box and then run all the wires through the firewall there. But what I realized was the Terminator itself is actually too big to fit inside the glove box. So I came up with this idea and I think that it's gonna be pretty ingenious. However, it does mean that I'm going to lose my glove box, which is also one of the last places for storage that I have in the Jeep, but who needs storage? It's not a daily driver. We're building a rock crawler and I'll find somewhere else to put my napkins. So I took the glove box out and actually removed the handle. And then I used a plastic pry tool to separate the front cover. 
And now when I reinstall the handle, the hinges and handle are still on the cover, which means that our glove box door will still slide into place and close. Now I'm gonna to toss a little bit of touch up paint around that hole that we just drilled. And I have a grommet uh, or a large gasket like on order for that, but it's not here yet. So in the meantime, we're not wasting any time. I'm gonna go ahead and run these wires through and get them up into the glove box. So that was pretty sweet and simple. As you guys can see, we have the cutout. I will throw in a grommet in there as soon as it comes in. I went ahead and mounted this relay right here to this ground. And then we have a fuse that is mounted just below that. I'm pretty sure neither of these actually have to be grounded. Actually, the fuse definitely doesn't. But I went ahead and just mounted them there so that they are out of the way. I'm going to, just to make things look a little bit better, take some wire loom and loom those guys up. Now, we do have a couple additional pinouts that are going to be available here. We'll kind of discuss those as we figure out that we need them. But beyond that, we have a power and ground that we're going to go straight to the battery. And then as I mentioned before, there's also another complete battery harness that we're going to need to install as well. And now looks like a great time to do that. Now, as for our wire setup on the inside of the Jeep, you can see I have the two main harnesses from the main cable, and then this being our main power cable, all of them resting in here nicely, and I have an idea for mounting the Terminator itself. And that should look something a little bit like this. So I'm gonna mount it to this brace support that is right here in the glove box itself, tucked up nice and high, and you'll actually still have access to the indicator lights on the top of the Terminator. Not exactly sure what these do, but they're labeled one through eight, so I kind of think this may be like a misfire indicator or something like that. But nevertheless, that is going to be a really solid spot for it. Everything can plug in to the back side, and that'll keep everything nice and tucked up out of the way. Now for the main power cord, this does come unterminated so that you can actually cut it to length. And as you can see, I've got way too much. So we're gonna cut this back quite a bit all the way until about here, and that should give us what we need to be able to connect to the battery. Speaking about the battery, the battery that I put in here about six months ago is completely dead. So I'm going to run that over to the parts store and see if I can't get a replacement. Probably upgrade it while I have it since we're using a larger motor and we're probably going to need a little bit larger of a battery. Now I still haven't ran any of my battery cables just yet or mentioned this to you guys but that's uh we're gonna talk about that that's pretty cool now since i am using the 4l80e transmission i was able to get a transmission control harness so wiring up the transmission is super sweet and simple of course you have your main harness there's only one way that it can go in and then you have your turbine speed at the front and vehicle speed sensor at the rear and that will take care of the transmission from the wiring side of things. Of course, we still have to figure out all of the shifter bracket stuff. Now, when it comes to installing all of the harnesses, you really can't mess this up. Each of these harnesses will only go into one slot. So safe to assume if it fits, you did it right. And just like that, with a couple of very well-placed self-tapping screws into the support beam of the dash. We have our unit installed. It is nice and secure and simply out of sight. And would you look at that? I just so happen to have a second pro clip that I've used 
for my phone for like the last five years. I found another one that I had laying around. So with the second Pro Clip, it is going to make installing an absolute breeze for the Terminator control unit. So of course I'm gonna tuck away the wire for the screen, but come on, it doesn't get better than that. Now a pretty important piece to this entire system is the simple fact that our stock Jeep accelerator pedal is not gonna work anymore. So I went ahead and ordered the drive-by wire system from Holly and picked up one of their accelerator pedals. But that means that this one has got to come out and we've got to figure out a way to mount the new one in. And if we're just gonna simply compare the two, clearly we're gonna have to figure some stuff out. There you go, that should do the job. So I took some of that quarter inch plate from the other day and threw this together. It'll have three mounting places on the body of the Jeep, which is one more than originally came on it. So that should do the trick. All right, we have a perfectly placed gas pedal. It is all plated up. I went ahead and added another bolt into the top. So it has four bolts in it when the factory one only came with two. So that thing's not going anywhere. This thing's perfect. So that leaves us with the last piece and now we can plug in the rest of our drive-by wire system. So there's one last piece of the wiring that we're going to focus on today and that is the fuel pump. As you guys can see we have the green wire which is going to come from the Holly harness. That is what's going to power our fuel pump. So I went ahead and added a little bit of length to it with this red wire, added a fuse in line. And I don't know how well you guys will be able to see, but we have a blue wire with an orange chaser. That is the 12 volt power for the stock fuel pump. You guys probably don't have as easy of access to it as I do, but nevertheless, that is going to power up our fuel pump. Now, Holly says if your fuel pump pulls more than 15 amps, you need to run it through a relay and have that green wire simply power the relay. I searched just about everywhere that I could online, wasn't able to find out how much power that factory fuel pump draws. So this may need to be revisited in the future, but I went ahead and threw a 15 amp fuse into that fuse holder so we'll never find ourselves in a position where that's going to become an issue without first blowing that fuse but that is just about going to do it for the wiring on the holly system there is one more wire however that we do need to address and that's this guy but that will be for next time make sure that you have subscribed if you haven't already like this video drop a comment Tell me everything that I'm doing wrong. I'm pretty sure that I got most of this right. But of course, we're not going to actually know until the day comes that we turn the key. So until then, I will see you guys in the next video.